when I got in accepted into the summer program, I wasn't sure what was going to happen, but I was pretty sure I wasn't going to be bored. I was super excited to go. I mean, when I was little, I dreamed of visiting Johnson Space Center. I heard all about how people had had so much fun there and on their vacations, but I'd never gotten the chance to go. And I mean, here I was, NASA was paying me for to come and visit and work and learn. I felt ecstatic when I was accepted to Haas. I was excited to go to NASA as an organization that has made so much history and will never be forgotten as long as humans exist. We started Haas off this year with a project to make a tool that would work for any situation. Our team decided unanimously on the peripheral object orienter. Basically what it did was that it was a elongated wrench for getting into smaller spaces. That way if you were working on the ISS, let's say, and you needed to get to a screw that was, un that was loose, but you couldn't reach your hand in there, you could use a peripheral object orienter to slide it into the smaller space and it had different shapes for different possible sizes of the screw. On Monday, we met John Gruner, a planetary scientist who works at NASA. He talked to us about the future of space travel. I think the thing that stuck most in our minds during the week was the important law of rocket science. Mass equals money. The more things you put on your rocket, the more expensive it is to complete your objective. Mr. Gruner talked about beyond low Earth orbit, or LEO, which helped us understand the requirements for our missions to be successful. Mr. Gruner also helped us decide the parameters of our project as a group, making it easier to work together. On Monday, we had Cody Kelly come and speak to us about spacesuits. Everyone always admires spacesuits for their appearances, but never for the amount of time and effort put into them. It takes a year just to design them, and that's not even including the process of making them. Mr. Kelly's presentation really opened up my eyes to the effort put into keeping these astronauts alive. As well as the effort uh, required in designing the suits, it was really interesting to see the amount of technology that was crammed into the suits, as well as the considerations for the environment they're meant to work on. I mean, we're designing them in, on Earth, but they're meant to work in hard vacuum and microgravity. That's not something that we can replicate here on Earth very easily. And so just seeing the ways, different ways they have to design them to account for that was really cool. So when we were first given the engineering challenge, everyone had their own idea on what they wanted the robot to look like and different manipulators and a whole bunch of different ideas that in and of themselves alone, they were good, they were okay. But only by collaborating and conjoining these ideas into uh, this one robot that we all worked together on could we create something that was great be it the caster wheel that one of us decided to tack on in the end or the upward facing supersonic sensor that one of us uh, suggested to give ourselves some control over the robot uh, these combining these ideas allowed us to create something that none of us alone could ever create Haas has had a profound impact on all of us and our lives will never be the same we have a great appreciation for the work it took to get to the moon, and we already appreciate the effort of the teams that it will take to send people to Mars. I feel I gained a lot of experience and insight into team projects and the work required to collaborate and complete them. I'm really proud of what HAS 2014 has accomplished, and I, I would participate again in a heartbeat. I'm incredibly grateful to the people who made this opportunity available for us. It's once in a lifetime.